The Chesapeake Bay watershed stretches more than 500 miles from Virginia to New York. Its rivers and streams drain into the Chesapeake Bay. The watershed is the topic of my seventh grade environmental science project called Testing the Waters. So far, we have used NOAA maps to study the watershed, assess its water quality during a field investigation, and now we will finish the project by creating and carrying out our own environmental stewardship plan to help the watershed. We will become environmental stewards. An environmental stewardship project is student-driven and can take on a variety of forms depending on what's meaningful for them. It could be taking part in uh, removing invasive species at their local park. It could be building a bioretention cell at the edge of their parking lot because that's where all the runoff goes. It could be enacting a campaign to reduce water use on campus, but being able to actually collect data about that. We followed eight steps to create our project. First, we learned about an entry event, an oyster die-off that happened in the Chesapeake Bay. And an oyster die-off is exactly what it sounds like, which is what? A lot of oysters what? Died. Died, okay. We watched a news video, read an article, and summarized the facts of the die-off. Then our teacher, Miss Martin, challenged us. So we're gonna see if we can determine why this oyster die-off happened. She took us to the NOAA website to examine buoy data. So they measure things like DO, water temperature, air temperature, wind speed. We compared its information to the conditions oysters need and found a storm had hit the bay. Too much fresh water killed the oysters. The entry event taught us the watershed has many environmental problems and needs help. That led us directly to our general driving question. How can we as environmental engineers design and enact a plan to improve the local watershed? That question focuses on our local area of the watershed. So we needed to learn more about its specific problems and what we could do to help. The students really don't know what the universe of options are that they could take to improve their local watershed. They might say, we're gonna improve the oysters in the Chesapeake Bay but we don't live anywhere near the Chesapeake Bay. So we want them to start thinking locally and building their background knowledge about what are some of the options of the things that they can do. So we played a game, gave short presentations on one environmental issue in action, then we each selected the problem we felt most passionate about and formed into interest groups. Miss Martin told us that the rest of our steps, three through eight, actually correspond to the phases of an engineering design brief. And we've done that very strategically because we want students to understand that engineers determine goals. They find out what they need to know. They have a plan for finding that out. They develop their plan, they test it, and then they report their findings. So those steps of the project are actually the steps that an engineer, an environmental engineer in this case, would go through in the real world to solve a problem. In step three, my group refined the general driving question by adding our favorite issue, which is improving water quality, and an action we want to take, which is replacing a storm drain at the edge of our school's main parking lot with a bioretention cell. The general question, that's the framework within, within which the whole project develops, but the specific question is the framework within which the students' passion and their actions develop. In step four, we set our goals by creating a list of tasks and a timeline. And outline what you're going to want to accomplish and when you're going to want to accomplish it by and who's going to be responsible for that step. We organized our materials and made a budget. In step five, we researched to find out how a bioretention cell works, how much it costs, and permits we needed. Step six, we created our specific plan with a diagram that we would follow to make our bioretention cell. Then we presented our project to the class. So the, therefore, we want to replace the storm drains into bioretention cells, thus improving the water quality. During the weeks ahead, we will construct and test our bioretention cell. Then we will collect and analyze data and draw conclusions. And they go out and they actually uh, do the project, they collect their data, they chronicle everything that they've done, everything that they've spent. In the final step, we will report our findings, suggest further action, and reflect on the process. They say, so, did it make a difference? Here was our problem, our question, right? Did it work? To what degree did it work? 
So they're developing their analysis skills, their evaluation skills, and they're learning how to communicate that. So the beautiful part of this project is it helps students to develop those skills with which they can go out after school and become engaged citizens. They can be part of the system. They can be part of nature. They can have an appreciation of nature. Far too many of our students nowadays are tied to electronic devices and they don't actually have an opportunity. We don't provide those opportunities for them to just stop and think about what can I do? What difference can I make in connecting and helping the natural world?